Today's topic for discussion is drugs for erectile dysfunction. This comes under the chapter male sex hormone towards the end of the topic. Drugs for erectile dysfunction usually comes as a short note. Sometimes some of the questions from this chapter are asked in the viva. Before going into the drugs proper, we must know what is erectile dysfunction, what is the physiology of the erection, what are the neuromediators involved in the erection process and what are the causes of erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction or ED is defined as inability to develop or maintain erection or both the things for sexual intercourse, sometimes the decreased desire to perform or the performance anxiety related stress that leads to premature ejaculation are also considered part of erectile dysfunction although they are not in the definition but they can be treated in the same line as that of erectile dysfunction. Erection is a vascular phenomenon. It has multiple inputs and components. It can be psychological as it can be provoked by thought. It has neural components in the form of intact parasympathetic nerve supply from the spinal S234 through nervi erigentes to pelvic plexus from which second order neuron through the cavernous nerve supply the penis. Vascular input is in the form of deep atria penis supplying the cavernous corpus cavernosum and inferior artery of the penis supplying corpus, corpus spongiosum and both are branch of internal pudendal artery which is a branch of, branch of internal iliac artery. Endocrine component is usually considered normal testosterone level. Sometimes erection is altogether spontaneous. Although the neuronal component is parasympathetic in nature, it is considered as a non-adrenergic, non-cholinergic nerve, releasing nitric oxide as the mediator, which is also known as endothelial-derived relaxing factor. Causes of erectile dysfunction can be multiple. This can be drugs like CNS active drugs, which are usually CNS suppressants. Organic cause can be also there like if any vascular abnormality or any nerve supply abnormality that, or it uh, can be purely psychogenic. Superficial fascia. Just beneath it are the superficial dorsal artery and vein. Beneath this is the deep fascia or it is also known as box fascia. Beneath the box fascia are the deep dorsal artery, vein and nerve. The deep dorsal artery. Okay, deep dorsal artery, vein and nerve. Beneath this is the tunica albuginea that is again form fascia and that is non expansile Inside the tunica albuginea are the two corpora cavernosa, singular is corpus cavernosum, one on either side in the shaft of the penis. At the, at the center of the corpus cavernosa is the deep artery of the penis which is a branch of internal pudendal artery. And uh, this has radiating helicin arteries into the substance of the erectile tissue and the erectile tissue is in the form of sinusoids which are filled by the blood from the helicin artery and when they are filled they get swelled up and they uh, because the tunica albuginea is firm that doesn't allow further expansion so the sinusoidal space or the erectile tissue becomes strong and hard. It uh, provides the erection to the penis. In the corpus spongiosum that is uh, contain that contains urethra at the center uh, uh, is uh, actually extends anteriorly in the form of glands. That is supplied by the inferior artery of the penis and which is also a branch of internal pudendal artery and it has also the same sinusoidal spaces which are also engorged because of the increased blood supply. Here it is a better view of the shaft of the penis. It is more uh, like a three dimensional view. The outermost layer is the skin, then the comes a superficial fascia. Beneath, that, uh, beneath it are uh, the superficial dorsal artery and vein. And underneath it is the deep fascia, below the deep fascia are the deep dorsal artery, nerve and vein. They are radiating 
now artery and vein radiating on both side in the form of circumflex artery and vein these uh, supplying into the substance of the corpus cavernosum through some emissary veins these emissary veins connect the superficial uh, that uh, connect the circumflex artery and vein with the subtunical venous flexus at the center of the corpus cavernosum on each side you can see the deep artery of penis which is radiating into the substance of the corpus cavernosum in the form of helical arteries or we call them helicin artery they supply the sinus, supply to the sinusoids and uh, the, on the lower side is the corpus spongiosum and it has a uh, urethra at the center and bulbourethral vessels if we want to go into a more details you can see the deep dorsal vein that is uh, receiving the blood from the circumflex veins you can see the circumflex vein is connected to the subtunical venous flexus through the emissary veins so when uh, these uh, sinusoids in the corpus cavernous become blood filled that puts pressure on these uh, circumflex Uh, veins as well as the emissary veins and the subtunical venous flexus because both the tunica albuginea and the deep fossa or the box fossa they are non expansile and rigid in nature because of the increased stagger pressure within the cap corpus cavernosum that develops or builds builds up because of increased blood supply and gradual swelling these flexus the emissary vein the circumflex vein as well as the deep dorsal vein they get gradually compressed and finally cut off the blood drainage from the sinusoids and the sinusoid now becomes very strong and firm this gives the erection to the penis you can see here both the condition one is flaccid other one is erect in the flaccid condition you can see the vessels with the venous component particularly is patent and the sinusoids are semi filled and flaccid ones so it is uh, in the flaccid condition of the penis so when there is dilated blood vessels particularly the deep artery of the penis and the helical arteries in the erect condition there is uh, you can see the sinusoids are completely filled and they are putting pressure on the tunica albuginea as well as on the deep fossa and compressing the vessels that is emissary vein and circumflex veins and as well as the venous flexus subtunical venous flexus and this uh, is reason for the erection so whenever there is uh, narrowing of the vessels Uh, of the deep artery particularly and helical arteries then there will be decreased blood supply and uh, gradually the venous drainage improves and the penis again becomes flaccid so the mechanism of erection will be in short like this the vaso relaxation in the erectile tissue leads to increased penile blood flow the relaxation of the trabecular smooth muscle leads to filling of the sinusoids and there is compression of the plexus of subtunical venules between the trabeculae and the tunica albuginea and there is occlusion of the venous outflow leading to erection you may find the youtube link for the video description of the mechanism of re- mechanism of erection now the drugs for the treatment of the erectile dysfunction phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors are the mainstay of the treatment of erectile dysfunction the drugs are sildenafil tadalafil vardenafil and avanafil avanafil is very uh, quick acting quick acting fast acting as well as very long uh, it is the longest acting so it is also known as weakened pill and they enhance the erectile response in uh, to the sexual stimulation so for them the prerequisite is intact neuronal supply before understanding the details of the mechanism of the action of the phosphodiesterase 5 we must know how the nitric oxide the main mediator in responsible for the erection works actually nitric oxide causes activation of the guanylate cyclase that causes conversion of the gtp to cyclic gmp this cyclic gmp actually in turn activate one phosphatase that converts myosin light chain phosphate to myosin light chain because the conversion of the light chain uh, phosphate to uh, light chain 
so it uh, the dephosphate uh, phosphorylated form of myosin light chain cannot interact with the actin and cannot cause contraction so uh, that causes relaxation uh, so in order to achieve the relaxation there must be enough amount of the cyclic gmp in the in the muscle tissue so there is a, another enzyme that comes into play that is phosphodiesterase this converts cyclic gmp to gmp thereby decreasing the activity of the no mediated dephosphorylation of the myosin light chain phosphate to produce relaxation so in order to achieve or to maintain or sustain the relaxation we have to maintain the cyclic gmp level by inhibiting this phosphodiesterase enzyme and here the uh, type of the phosphodiesterase subtype is phosphodiesterase 5 and sildenafil comes into play here by inhibiting the phosphodiesterase 5 and thereby increasing the concentration of the cyclic gmp in the muscle tissue this cyclic gmp activates the uh, phosphatase and causes dephosphorylation of myosin light chain phosphate and prevents contraction or produce relaxation side effects are hypotension flushing uh, headache and visual disturbance sometimes mi may occur at the peak of the sexual intercourse or if there is excessive of the drug taken it may cause priapism priapism is persistent painful prolonged erection of the penis hypotension because it causes um, vasodilatation so there may be falling of the bp flushing because of the dilatation of the uh, superficial blood vessels supplying the skin and uh, mostly of the facial area headache because of the dilatation of the meningeal blood vessels visual disturbance occurs because of the additional inhibition of the phosphodiesterase 6 which is uh, present in the retina and uh, this causes sudden loss of vision and it is described as non arteritic anterior ischemic optic neuropathy it usually happens in those people who have a history of NAION or those who have retinitis pigmentosa. MI usually occurs in pre those people who have previous history of angina or previous MI. Because the blood is a, um, um, redirected to the healthy side in case of uh, this coronary artery diseases the healthy tissue may get enough more blood and because of the redirection of the blood from the uh, ischemic zone to the uh, non ischemic zone the mi may happen and because sexual intercourse is a physical activity at the height of the uh, intercourse at the height of the excitation maybe because of the increased uh, oxygen demand the mi happens and mi actually occurs in that condition priapism it may occur in any person but mostly with a higher dose so accordingly contraindications it is contraindicated in patients having coronary heart disease those patients taking nitrate therapy because nitrates themselves are vasodilators those having a history of NAION or even retinitis pigmentosa and in those people taking enzyme inhibitors like cytochrome P450 enzyme inhibitors because they inhibit the metabolism of these sildenafil tadalafil or the, all these phosphodiesterase 5 inhibitors causing increased effect or more side effect and uh, these phosphodiesterase 5 uh, although they are mainstay of the treatment of the erectile dysfunction the additional use is they are also used in pulmonary arterial hypertension because uh, because of selectivity to the pulmonary circulation other treatments are papaverin and phentolamine induced uh, penile erection that is pipe and here the injection is given directly into the corpora cavernosa because injection is given directly into the tissue there is chance of pain hematoma or infection or even with repeated injection there is chance of fibrosis the other treatment is available usually the second line treatment uh, to the sildenafil is the prostaglandin e1 analog that is alprostadil it is given in the form of muse therapy that is medicated urethral system for erection and because uh, it is a prostaglandin so it may cause some urethral pain and burning sensation although it is bearable and the third treatment is testosterone intramuscular injection if there is actual testosterone deficiency in the person and if the vessels nerves they are not intact 
which are prerequisite uh, to uh, have uh, some erection uh, in that condition if they are already damaged then uh, all the previous treatments may not be helpful in that condition we have to give surgical prosthesis and uh, that will help in uh, having some uh, um, having uh, erection for some sexual intercourse with this we have finished the chapter erectile dysfunction thank you